What's up guys, Garrett here, and today I wanted to talk to you about the drawbacks of ICF construction. Now I'm always going to be one to praise ICF for the high effective R values, the incredible comfort of the home and consistency throughout, the uh, huge strength in those walls, the ease and speed of constructability. There's so many good things about ICF, but you know, I spent two years building using that ICF and there are a few drawbacks to it. So here are the seven drawbacks to ICF construction. Now the first drawback to ICF construction is you're most likely going to have to redesign your plans. Now there are ICF plans out there and if you find those, that's great. You can skip this. However, the majority of them are made for two by four or two by six homes. So you're going to have to hire an architect or somebody to redraw those plans to accommodate the thickness of that ICF block. In my case, my house plans were drawn up for two by six construction. So I had to have them modified for my block. Now, that costs an extra 2500 bucks, so it is fairly substantial, but it sure makes the layout whenever you're actually building the house a heck of a lot easier when you have the exact dimensions of everything. Also, remember that you're probably going to have to scale up the size of your house whenever you're adjusting your house plans. Now, uh, you don't want to lose a bunch of interior space due to the thickness of those uh, ICF blocks. So that means that your house is actually gonna grow out to accommodate that extra thickness. The second drawback to ICF is the physical size of the blocks themselves. Now they're pretty darn big. They're generally a foot thick to 16 inches tall and four feet wide. So moving them around takes some doing. Now when you buy them, you generally buy them by the bundle, which has 12 blocks in them. It's roughly four foot wide, four foot deep, and four feet tall. And they weigh probably about 80 pounds whenever you get all of them. So moving those around is definitely not really a one-man job. You're probably going to need two people or you may damage the blocks whenever you are moving them. And if you are going to move them, I recommend some sort of equipment. In my case, I got some bucket forks for my tractor so I could load a bundle on that, get it up to the height that I want, and then slide it off to, say, my main level. Or you can use a telehandler, and that's probably the best case scenario. That thing can get really, really high and it can lift a whole lot of weight. So you can do one or two bundles at a time if you're using that. Now before I ever actually started construction on my house, I built a 3,300 square foot shop so that I could put building materials in. I knew that these ICF blocks were gonna be huge. Now I left the basement ones outside because I knew I was gonna use those in a pretty short period of time. However, the ones for my main level, I needed a place to store those that was out of the sun. So that was the main reason for building this big old shop. Now it probably took two thirds of the shop and that stacked too high with these bundles. So these things are huge. Keep that in mind if you're building your own home. You're gonna need some sort of extra space for storage. Now if you're a contractor, this probably isn't a big deal for you. You probably have a staging area where all of your ICF is. However, if you're the homeowner building like I did, you need a place to put this stuff. When you're ordering your ICF blocks, remember that if you can get them at a home store, you generally don't have them in stock. So you're gonna have to special order them or you're gonna have to get them straight from the manufacturer. So you're gonna most likely be getting them one bundle at a time. So make sure you get enough because if you don't, they're gonna have to be special ordered, they're gonna have to be trucked in and it's expensive and it takes time. The third drawback to ICF construction is you must measure and plan just perfectly. Remember once the concrete is in the walls and it is set, there is no going back. You're not gonna move a window, you're not gonna move a door. They're set, they are where they are. Do it right the first time. Take a little extra time before you ever put concrete in that wall. Make sure everything is perfect. Also, spend a lot of time thinking about the penetrations that go through the wall. The things like the, the gas line, the water line, the sewer line, the electric line, the sump pump, the fresh air for your HVAC, the internet, the phone. I mean, anything that has to go through. The, the walls. It could be, you know, for a water spigot. It could be electrical for a switch or something like that. 
If it's small enough, you can drill through the wall, but if it's big, you either have to core through it or you may just be out of luck. Number four, ICF walls are really thick. So around your doors and windows, you're most likely gonna have custom trim. Also remember that square footage is determined from the outside of the walls to the outside of the walls. So you're gonna lose about a foot of thickness on each side. You're actually gonna lose square footage and you're gonna be taxed on the total square footage of your house, even though some of it is uh, just the wall space. Number five, the blocks could get sun damaged during construction. Now, you'll notice as construction goes on and your blocks are still uncovered, so the drywall's not on them, the siding's not on them, whatever that is, you'll notice a color change. It goes from a very, very bright white to kind of a pale yellowish color. Now, this is just the very thin layer on the outside of the block being sun damaged. It does not affect the structural integrity of the block, so you don't have to worry about that. But where it becomes a pain is it, it makes a really fine powder on the outside of the block. Unless you scrape or brush off this powder, things like your waterproofing membrane or your flashing tape are not gonna stick to the block. So you either have to brush it off, which is definitely something you wanna do, and there's a primer that they make that you can roll on to the outside of the block that makes things stick to it a heck of a lot better. I definitely recommend that primer, but it is a whole nother procedure and expense that you have to go through before you can attach the tape or the waterproofing membrane. The sixth drawback to ICF construction is that you can't really run a lot of things within the walls themselves. Now, typically I'm talking about the interior of the walls. You have two and a half inches of foam, so you have to be mindful of what runs within that two and a half inches. For example, your plumbing. So you generally on those outer walls, the ICF side of the walls, you're not gonna want to put anything more than like an inch and a half pipe in. You can run two inch pipe, but remember that two inch pipe is two inches inside diameter. The outer diameter is closer to two and a quarter inches. And if you have any sort of couplings that join two pieces together or elbows or that sort of stuff, that coupling can be two and a half inches to even sometimes a little bit greater, which pushes your drywall out. When you're initially designing your home, try to think about what is gonna be in those walls. So if it's plumbing, if it's electrical, if it's cable, whatever it is, put as much of it in the interior walls as you possibly can. Uh, the less that you have to put in the ICF walls, the fewer the channels that you actually have to cut out within the walls. You don't have to get into the thickness issues where you may have to actually shim out your wall because you have something within it that is too thick. You definitely don't want to put like a dryer vent on an outside wall. Make sure it's on an interior wall. The last drawback I wanted to talk about with ICF uh, is actually the moisture in the walls. So you have to remember you fill those walls with concrete and that concrete has a whole lot of water in it. And that water has to escape somehow as that concrete cures. And it's gonna find those little crevices and cracks between those blocks to come out. However, it's gonna do it really slowly. So it's imperative in those early days to have dehumidifiers running, even while you're in construction. Now I noticed within the first year of living in our house, having the drywall in place, having the siding in place, that the humidity levels hovered around 60%. And that is way too high, uh, not only for comfort, but you run the risk of, of getting mold. So dehumidifiers are terribly important. Make sure that you have one, if not two, running simultaneously, at least through that first year. I noticed as the second year went on, the levels dropped considerably. Now it's more like 50%. So I know that we're drawing some of that moisture out of those walls. But again, dehumidifiers, Super duper important. Another issue I noticed with the moisture was uh, corrosion on the electrical components, especially in the basement. I had to take the outlets and the switches out so that I could finish my basement, and when I did that, I noticed quite a bit of corrosion on the back sides of it. Anywhere that there is electrical or switches within those ICF walls, I would recommend them to be wet rated. 
Even though there are some drawbacks to ICF, the benefits far, far outweigh any problems associated with it. Just go back, rewatch this video, and make any of the little adjustments and changes that I suggested throughout all the points that I made. Using this technology, your house will be so much quieter, your bills are gonna be so much lower, and you're gonna build something that's gonna last a really, really long time, and it's really just not gonna rot from underneath you. I hope this is helpful, guys, and if it was, please hit that like button below. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Also, subscribe for more great content like this. I'll see you next time.